Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I am of the stars, and I have two short stories for you regarding samskaras, which are propensities towards soul wounding caused by prior um, uh, free will decisions that have resulted in um, something like electromagnetic field pinching in, the lines of light pinching in and glomming together like that, tiny little imperfections in the electromagnetic field. So these samskaras are carried from lifetime to lifetime as a way of continuing soul education from incarnation to incarnation, right? So we've done something in the past that caused uh, a samskara, or a, what you might want to call a karmic knot. Okay, and uh, and the next lifetime we're working for greater soul wisdom by figuring out more about that that particular decision that we made and other decisions that could be made. So, with the right trigger. Uh, in this lifetime, a samskara from a prior lifetime can burst forth into action. A samskara is a propensity to action um, through soul wounding, right? And the right stimulus needs to be applied from the hologram in order for that samskara to be activated. So it's like a, a pressure a pressurized um, button in our soul field that when, when it's touched by the right stimulus it leaps forth and um, and uh, propels us into further soul wounding unless we resolve it at that moment. So here are two visualizations about the samskaras as they leap into action. Long years ago, well it seems like that, Many years ago, I was down in the panhandle of Texas specifically to meet a gentleman no, named Swami J, SwamiJ.com, who had done the most incredible, intensive work on uh, commentary on and interpretation of Patanjali's aphorisms, which is a favorite a spiritual book of mine, and for, for gaining enlightenment or knowledge of God, ways to know God, right? Um, so it offered this book offered techniques for learning how to know God in this lifetime or very soon, and this was very appealing to me. So I went down, and he was a very um, he was a very uh, lively explainer and teacher. And uh, so the question came up about Sam's Karras, and I remember very distinctly he. We were in a meditation room, very sparsely furnished, uh, in more like a Zen style meditation room. And he turned down the lights and he went over to the far wall, which was dark because the lights had been turned down. And he says, he says, now, now here is the your here is your your mind here. This is your mind. That black wall is your mind, right? He says, and and now I want you to imagine. He says, popcorn. Uh, uh, seeds of popcorn in the wall, right? And then all of a sudden, one pops out straight out at you, right? And then she says, and now a bunch more pop out. <laughs> and I'm going, whoa. And, and then he says, um, and these are the samskaras leaping forth into action. I must have been hungry because all these years I've remembered that one. I thought it was pretty good. So now just now, I was, uh, I was just driving down the street, right? And I had a, a vision of myself about samskaras. Uh, I, I visualized a person walking along the street. And all of a sudden, my soul said, don't step there. And this person stepped there anyway. And what leaped out was like, um, it was like, um, you know, when you throw a ribbon of confetti out and it, leaps out, you know, from your hand. It's still in your hand, but the string leaps out. Or like there's a spring, a spring uh, underneath of a, like a, a button, 
uh, and you touch the button and the thing springs up like um, like a jack-in-the-box. That wasn't quite it. It was more like what sprang up was was a scroll of paper like that, you know, all scrolled up together, that looked like flypaper springing up. So I guess uh, what that is is a representation of activating a samskara to which we can then get stuck so that we move into acting out rather than taking action to transform the negative emotions we feel because of the samskara and use the heart to transform them to light. When we do that, when we use that transformative technique for the negative emotions, then the samskara, just the energy of the samskara, completely evaporates. There's no more little spring holding it to the mind. And so the samskara itself is dissolved in love. Well, y'all take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.